to view. I have on my immediate right, Karen James Shaw, and she's the president of the Offshore Islands Conservation Program. And to her right is Natalia Lawrence, coordinator of the Offshore Islands Conservation Program. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. And how are you this morning? Wonderful, thank you. Great, great. Um, if you could just tell us a little about the um, Environmental Awareness Group, the EAG in general. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so as Sherilyn said, I'm the president of the Environmental Awareness Group. Uh, this is a, a non-profit, non-governmental organization, and we've been in existence for over 23 years now in Antigua and Barbuda. And basically, our aim is to promote sustainable use and management of the natural resources of Antigua and Barbuda. So this is basically what we're about. Historically, we've done a lot of advocacy. Um, we've continuously engaged in a lot of education, trying to educate persons about you know, the types of environmental resources we have and how to maintain them, and, um, and basically raising awareness. And what are, and, um, Ms. Lawrence, if you could tell us a bit about the Offshore Islands Conservation Program. The Offshore Islands Conservation Program is just one of the projects that the EAG has that if they run. Um, it's the largest project and we have been in existence. It started as the Antiguan Racer Conservation Project, which was an emergency response to save our critically endangered Antiguan racer. So it was rediscovered, the snakes were rediscovered in 93 mm -hmm. and the project began in 95. Now after we realized that the ra rats on offshore islands did not exist well with the Antiguan racer, so we cleared the island of rats. And then immediately we saw positive effects on the racer population. Then we also noticed that the vegetation and other wildlife, birds, lizards, everything just flourished. So it changed, the project changed from a project to a program, which is from Antiguan Racer to the Offshore Islands Conservation Program. And in addition to that, we started on Great Bird Island, but then we've expanded to other islands to, you know, um, restore more habitat for our local wildlife. Okay, wonderful. But mm -hmm. shamefully, I must say, I didn't know we had snakes. Where are they? <laughs> Okay, we used to have them on the mainland, but after mongooses and mm -hmm. then rats, um, they were completely eradicated from the mainland, but they're also on offshore islands. So the population that was rediscovered was on Great Bird Island. Okay, wonderful. Right. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay, and um, what are some of the projects and programs that the EAG is currently working on? Um, so, as Natalia mentioned, there's the Offshore Islands Conservation Program. That is actually a partnership. Mm -hmm. EAG is one of the partners. The government, um, specifically the Ministry of Agriculture, um, we may work most closely with the Environment Division. They're also another local partner, but the EAG does the major management. And then the other partners are international partners um, from the UK, Fauna and Flora International, Dorel, and also from the US, Island Resources Foundation. A lot of people know Kivel Lindsay. Um, and Black Hill State University. So the OICP is you know, the, the really the major program of the EAG. In addition to that, um, we engaged with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland a few years ago to develop a birding trail at Christian Valley. Um, that project has been completed, so there is a birding trail that persons can go in and join Christian Valley. And we're now extending that into a, a birding tourism project, trying to you know, make locals more aware of this whole idea of birding and, you know, why people would want to pay to see birds. Yes, yes. So that is an Very ongoing... in the U.S. It <laughs> is, right? You know that. But a lot of people here, they say birds. We have birds. So, right. so, so that is an ongoing project right now. In addition to that, we have a fern conservation pro um, project ongoing um, where Kivel Lindsay really is um, assessing our fern resources around the island. He goes everywhere up on the highest point in Antigua, down in the lowest valley trying to catalog our fern resources um, we do monthly hikes a lot of people know the EAG for our monthly yes. hikes and we still do those so um, for 2013 every third Saturday we go to a different part of Antigua and with us it's not just a hike I mean yes you get the physical benefits mm -hmm. but we also tell you about where you are and what's important where you are and um, you know why why it's a good idea to, to appreciate it um, so those are Am I missing any other major projects right now? Well, the Caribbean Waterbird Census. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> There's the Caribbean Waterbird Census. And throughout the Caribbean, basically, again, we're, throughout the Caribbean, we're 
taking more notice of these avian resources. So every year there's a census. And again, it's not just Antigua, it is Caribbean wide, but in Antigua, we have joined into this. So this is led by Andrea Otto. She's a long serving volunteer of the EAG. And we go to a number of different wetlands, including McKinnon's Pond, for example, and basically count how many, how many birds are there, how many different types of birds, which species. Right. So, yes. You spoke about ferns. I mean, I guess you see a fern and to you it looks like a bush or mm -hmm. to the average person it's just a bush. What is the importance of a fern? Well, it speaks to our diversity in terms of plant life. Um, there are a lot of places now where a lot of different islands and even countries where they're realizing that they've cut down a lot of their natural flora to plant certain, you know, typically beautiful plants. Right. But that decreased diversity has a lot of far-reaching impacts. Right. Um, we look at this beautiful property and there are a lot of different things that are being grown. We don't realize, for example, that a certain tree next to whatever be is being grown may be beneficial to that plant because it may be warding off certain types of insects. Mm -hmm. um, by reducing the diversity of flora, you're, d you're decreasing potentially your access to natural medicines. And protection. Exactly. So, with the ferns, we want to see what it is we have, catalog our diversity of ferns, and from there on, we can determine, okay, so how many of these may be endangered? Do we want to help save them? Do we maybe not want to clear McNish Mountain because there are these very oh, rare ferns up there? I've hiked up that thing, it's hard. <laughs> yes, but when you get to the top, it's so rewarding. It's <laughs> so this is, it, it's important to know what we have. If you don't know what you have, then, you know, just going out and saying save everything for the sake of saying it, you know, you don't know what you're talking yes, about. Exactly. So it's important, first of all, to catalog what we have, mm -hmm. you know, put it in its right category. Is it endangered? Is it, you know, everyone has one? And then from there, you can know how to make policy decisions regarding these plants. Okay. Um, Miss Lawrence, on which offshore islands um, is the OICP currently working? Well, I'll work our work site the focus of it is in the northern side of the island so we work in an area called the northeast marine management area which is a protected marine area and that starts from prickly pear over by Java going right down to york island so we have steady islands that we work on like great bird island rabbit island lobster island but we also do surveys on some other islands you with lobster island lobster island we have over that. we have over 50 offshore islands and keys yes and that's close to Antigua Lobster Island? Very. I know about Great Bird Island and, and all the others. There's Lobster, Redhead, Jenny, Prickly Pear. We have about three Pelican I Islands. Need to come on one of your tours. <laughs> Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> yes, and we also work in Redonda. We do surveys on Redonda, which is the most remote island that we have. Yeah. And um, what future activities are planned for the OICP? Well, we. As I mentioned before, we always try to expand our work because there's so much development on the mainland. A lot of habitat for our wildlife has been lost. Mm -hmm. So we all often consider the offshore islands as the last refuge for our natural um, biodiversity, for our biodiversity. And um, we just want to make as, as much space, as much safe habitat for these animals and plants as we possibly can. So we just plan on restoring more islands as it, that is getting rid of the invasive predators, rats and m probably mongooses as well. And also training our local um, volunteers because we do, our work is heavily reliant on, on, volunteer, on volunteerism and we rely a lot on external expertise. So the more we train our persons on the mainland, on, in Antigua, the less we have to rely on persons coming in from overseas to show us how to take care of what is ours. Right. In, a, in a part of your awareness and your education of persons in Antigua Barbuda with regard to your work and what exists and what doesn't, I mean, I think if you, you're not doing it already, it would be a great um, venture to probably, you know, take persons on a tour of all these islands and even show what's available, because I doubt I'm the only person that didn't know we had snakes. <laughs> Actually, we do it all the time. We have a program called the Floating Classroom. So okay, wonderful. Yes, right, we go to schools and we make presentations about the endangered species of Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we take the kids out into the same Northeast, Mar Northeast Marine Management Area, and they go into the mangroves, they learn why mangroves are important, that it's not just a swamp. Right. And then after that, we also go to Great Bird Island. Well, before that, we go to Redhead or Rabbit, wherever the pelicans are nesting because we, we have a Caribbean brown pelican, the only diving pelican. Then we go to Great Bird Island and the kids look for snakes. Sometimes we catch them, I show them how to hold them, I show them how to tell the difference between a male and a female. 
and then we do some bird watching and so their questions you know we just look around the island and see what we what have what about the adults though because probably we're the ones who are mostly <laughs> affecting <laughs> the areas well um for now the concentration is on students because right. what They're i found what we found mm -hmm. that is true but the adults are already set in their ways and nobody in Antigua, the adults, they don't really like to hear about snakes. Mm -hmm. So as when, the, when we're taking the kids out, some of the parents are a bit wary, you know, they're like, I don't want my children to go on a boat or I don't want my child to right. touch a snake because right. they just think, and our snakes are harmless. Right. They don't, they don't, they're not poisonous, they're not venomous. Mm -hmm. So we target the kids because they have less fear, but we still do target adults and we encourage, teachers do come and we encourage parents to come as well. Okay. So. So how is the work funded of the OICP? Um, we try to keep costs as low as possible because we're not for profit. So we do a lot of volunteer work, but we also do get donations um, from members, from persons from all around the world. But our main source of funding is right now from the Critical Ecosystems Partnership Fund. Just now we completed a grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and we just got another competitive grant from the Critical Ecosystems Partnership Fund to the tune of over 100,000 U.S. dollars. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what about the EAG? What activities? Do you have any activities planned? Well, for the moment, like I said, we have our monthly hikes. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one, we're heading to Sugarloaf, if I remember correctly, uh, ah, a weekend yes, or two from now. That's another critical one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you'll get everything from that, the, the, the physical part and everything else. And this is on Saturdays or Sundays? This Sunday? is on a Saturday morning. On a Saturday morning, um, usually, not that early. <laughs> so we usually go between 6.30 and 7. So okay. we, we're, we're in between the 5 a.m. hikers and the hatches in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they are the monthly hikes and we do have, we've, we've rostered all of our hikes for the year mm -hmm. and if, so, if persons go to our website, eagntiga.org, they can see what's coming up in May, June, right down to December. Okay. Um, in addition to that, like I said, we continue our work with the, with the birding trail, mm -hmm. the birding tourism work, um, and we, we do, you know, through the, um, the, the OICP, the floating classrooms, those continue as soon as schools call us. Um, we try to set up means by which we can get them out on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, turtle conservation, that is something else that we do that I didn't mention before, but starting hopefully around the end of June to July, we'll start doing our annual turtle tours. We will I've take persons. I've always wanted to come and see one of those. They're very, the very popular. And that, yes, so. and mm -hmm. as soon as we open it, it books up so quickly. So we'll let you know as soon as it does. Oh, definitely. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people, the Hawksbill turtles are endangered. Mm -hmm. So we do try to get persons, you know, both children and adults out there to see them, mm -hmm. you know, and understand why it is that they are endangered and why it's important to protect them. Okay. How can residents support the OICP? Well, you've heard me say before, volunteer. We always need help. So in addition to that, when you go onto the offshore islands, you have to act in an irresponsible manner. Yes. Because as I said, this is our wildlife. We have to take care of it. And we have to take care of it. So when you are on the islands, when you see snakes, you don't kill them. You don't disturb nesting birds. Okay. And be careful of the um, invasive predators that you may carry over, like yeah. rats. And the trash, yes. 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 How can um, interested persons get involved in the EAG or the OICP? Well, we have an office upstairs, the museum on Long Street. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I would encourage persons to drop in. Right now we're staffed in the mornings from 8 to 12. Um, so drop in, talk to us, um, find out you know, more about the things that we do. We produced a 2013 calendar. Mm -hmm. Photos are taken in Antigua and Barbuda of all our wildlife. Um, we have the Wild Plants Book of Antigua and Barbuda. So if you're really interested in plants and you want to know about more about what we have, you can purchase a book. Um, become a member. It's right now. It's just 50 EC dollars per year to become a member. Okay, um, volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know, we have we have so many needs. Everything from, you know, if you have accounting skills, we could use your help. If you want to come out on the trails with us to help clear trails, we could use your help. Um, and basically donate also um coming up this summer we have our summer camp camp grow and that has been going on for the past two summers it's been quite successful um we've had donors come on board such as mill refund and the sandals foundation in, in addition to others that have really helped but we always need more help both in terms of funding and in terms of you know physical um, assistance so there are a lot of ways to volunteer 
and we encourage persons if they're interested at all no matter what facet of the environment come in and talk to us you can also email eagntigo.org okay thank you so much ladies for thank coming you. out this morning to this beautiful beautiful location and speaking with us and we hope that you have been reliably or quite informed from our interview this morning. We were speaking with Karen James Ashaw, and she's the president of the EAG, and Natalia Lawrence, who is the coordinator of the Offshore Islands Conservation Program, as we continue our focus on the Ministry of Agriculture, the importance it plays in preserving our wildlife and our vegetation here in the Twin Island State. Do stay with us. Good morning, Antigua Barbuda. We'll be right back. This morning.